Now look, I've said it time and time before, investing is complex at the best of times. Knowing what fund to pick, what to invest in, what strategy you should use, there's a lot going on. But what happens when you want to invest towards multiple goals that have different time horizons? You know, let's say you have a house that you'd like to buy in five years and you're saving up for a deposit, but you also want to save towards your retirement so that you can retire early. Both targets are very different. Finding a single solution is going to be difficult. So what do we do? Do you tackle both problems at once? Can you even do that? Well, in this video, we're going to show you a simple method that you can use using a set of popular funds, the Vanguard Life Strategy range. We're going to explain how you can get the most out of these funds and use them effectively to help you reach your financial goals. Now, before we start, we do just want to make it clear that we are not professional investment advisors. And if you want independent financial advice tailored to your own circumstances, then you should seek that from a professional. We're just making this video for fun and you know, we want to show you how we think about the Vanguard Life Strategy range. With that out of the way, let's get straight into it. One of the most important things that we need to do as investors is to take a step back and ask ourselves, why am I investing? Hopefully that answer is related to some sort of financial goal, but what are your goals? Maybe you want to start that business you've always thought about but you need to save up the capital to get it going properly. Or it could be the idyllic beaches of Bora Bora, but not when you're 70, maybe you want it when you retire at 50. Or maybe it's that dream house that you'd love to buy in five years that has a huge garden so that you can host the maddest parties in Sheffield. Maybe that's just me. Either way, most of us do not just have one goal. We like to dream big. The question is, how do you invest towards a set of goals that have varying time horizons? Maybe you go one at a time, investing towards each goal accordingly and ticking them off in chronological order. Well, the problem with that is that your longer term goals could start to suffer. You may have many goals in the short and medium term and then you end up never actually saving for the long term. Or maybe you just average them out. Let's say you have a target in three years and then you have a target that's 25 years away. Split it down the middle, call it a 14 year target. Again, this is not ideal. 14 years is classed as a long term goal. So if you're going to start investing with a long term mindset, your portfolio may be taking on too much risk when you're considering that you're going to have to reach the first goal in three years time. So, all right then, let's keep them separate. Now, how do you pick a set of funds that are in line with our financial goals or our life? A strategy for our life. Life strategy. Now, I hope you know what I'm talking about, otherwise that whole dramatized section was for nothing. Of course, I'm referring to the Vanguard Life Strategy range. In the UK, Vanguard have a set of funds called the Vanguard Life Strategy range. They're a collection of funds that are made to make the whole fund selection process a whole lot easier. Now, I have covered these funds before quite a few times in previous videos, so if you feel like you know enough about them, then just skip to the next section of the video. You can have user timestamps or just skip to this time here. Easy. If you're still watching, then you want to know what these funds are. That or your device is broken and you can't get my ugly mug off your screen, but either way, we'll go ahead. In the life strategy range, there are five different funds, which each have a varied percentage allocation to equities and bonds. Just so it's clear, equities are simply stocks or shares, whilst bonds are another type of asset, sometimes called fixed income, in which you essentially make a loan to a borrower. All that you need to know is that bonds are generally less risky than equities but they also often provide lower returns. The five funds range from 20% equity, 80% bonds, to 40-60, 60-40, 80-20, and then finally 100% equity and 0% bonds. The number in the title of the fund refers to what percentage of equities the fund holds. So the funds with a lower percentage allocation to equities, like the Vanguard Life Strategy 20% fund, are generally less risky, but you're also expected to get lower returns. Equally, the Vanguard Life Strategy 100% fund takes on the most risk, so you are expected to get the highest returns. So the funds with a lower percentage of equities are more suited to people who either have a short investment horizon or who just don't like taking on too much risk. But equally, the higher equity percentage funds, they're suited for people who have a long investment horizon or who want to take on a lot of risk. In summary, the funds are just really handy. They're really well diversified and you can get them all for the low ongoing charge of just 0.22%. So why is this useful for us? Well, it means that you can just select a fund that matches the risk profile that you're looking for all in one decision. It just makes our lives so much more simple. So now you know all about the Vanguard Life Strategy range. 
but now how can we actually use it to help us work towards our separate financial goals? Well, luckily, Vanguard have a really useful graphic that just shows us what each fund in the life strategy range is specialized for. The graphic puts all of the funds on a sort of investing timeline, which matches up with how we should think about our investing goals. Starting at the left hand side, you have the life strategy 20 and 40 funds, which are suited to short term goals, which Vanguard describes as three to five years away. As you move towards the middle, you have the life strategy 60% fund, which is suited to medium term investing goals, which are over five years away. Then over to the right hand side, we have the life strategy 80 and 100% funds, which is suited to longer term investing goals, which are over 10 years away. So with this in mind, you can hopefully build up a bit of a picture on how you should be using these funds. But to help us better understand them, we're going to look over their returns data over the past 10 years or so. This first funky looking graph that we have shows the annual returns for each of the funds. We have a life strategy 20 fund in blue, the 40 in red, the 60 in yellow, the 80 in green, and then the 100 in orange. As you can see, in the years that the market produced large positive returns, the 100% fund had the highest returns with the 20% fund having the lowest returns. This is to be expected, as the 100% fund is of course 100% equities. However, the key thing to note here is the year 2018, where we saw negative returns for the year. In 2018, the fund with the lowest returns was the 100% fund, whilst the 20% fund had the highest returns, although it was still negative. This is because equities took a huge hit that year, but the large allocation to bonds in the Life Strategy 20 fund gave the fund stability and smoothed out the returns. Now, please don't let these returns fool you. Since 2012, we've had some pretty fantastic stock market returns. It's really not always like this. So the need for bonds in short-term investing is much more than these graphs actually suggest. The next graph we have shows a growth of £10,000 if it was invested in each fund from the beginning of 2012. As you would expect, the 100% fund had the most growth, up to £26,800 whilst the 20% fund had the least growth, up to £16,250. But again, don't discount the Life Strategy 20 fund. As you can see, it has had the smoothest slope on the graph, showing that it is not very volatile and it can have stable growth. Compare this to the Life Strategy 100 fund, which has large variations in growth. If the market has a few negative years, the Life Strategy 100 fund would feel the full force of it. So as a quick sort of recap, we've thought about the problem of how to invest towards different goals that have varying time horizons. And then we've also looked at the tools that we're going to use to solve the problem in the Vanguard life strategy range. Now, finally, we need a plan. The first thing that we must do is review our financial goals and make sure we have a clear idea of what we would like to achieve. Now, the more clear that we can be when defining our goals, the more successful this process will be. Having quantifiable goals to work towards which have a relatively precise target date will work best. For example, saying that I want to buy a house soon is a target yes, but if we can be more accurate with that and say I want to have a £20,000 deposit by the year 2027, then we've quantified it. But equally, if any of your goals can be grouped together, then that also helps. The last thing that we want is to have six goals all coming up at similar times because it just makes things hard to manage. For the sake of this video, we're going to go through a relatively simple example together just so you can get an idea of how the process works. First of all, I'm going to lay down some random goals. Let's say I'd want to have £15,000 saved up for a deposit by 2025, £5,000 saved up for a business venture which I'd start in 2026, and then a long-term target of £250,000 saved up by 2050 which will go towards retirement. Now, before we even get started, we can see that we have two financial goals that have very similar time horizons, uh, four and five years away. To make it as simple as possible, we're going to combine these goals together. So we can say that we'd like a total of 20,000 pounds in five years. This has left us with two investing targets, 20,000 pounds in five years, and then also 250,000 pounds in about 30 years. So let's refer back to the graphic on the Vanguard Life Strategy page. We can see that the five year goal could be considered as a short term goal, whilst the 30 year goal could be considered as a long term goal. Now, this makes sense, as we wouldn't want too many equities for our goal that's five years away, because if it was some sort of market crash, we'd be screwed big time. But for the longer term goal, over the course of 30 years, there will inevitably be a market crash. But either way, the market has plenty of time to recover, so plenty of equities should perform best. So using this information, we can assign a life strategy fund to each of our goals. For the five year goal, the life strategy 40% fund seems like a sensible option, whilst the life strategy 100% option suits our longer term goal. With this, we can build a portfolio that is made up of these two different funds. 
In some ways, we can treat them as separate portfolios, even though they can be held within the same ISA or investing account. The money that we invest towards the Life Strategy 40 fund is strictly for the short term goal, whilst the money that we invest for the Life Strategy 100 fund is strictly for the longer term goal. The benefit of this type of portfolio is that it's simple. You don't have to worry about how much you're managing risk and what money goes where, you simply have two funds for your two goals and you invest your money accordingly. Now, selecting some funds that are suitable for your financial goals is only half the story. We would actually need to work out how much money to invest in each of the funds so that we can actually achieve our financial goals. Once we've done this, we'll have a fairly complete financial plan. Now, admittedly, this part can be a bit more complex, but I'll show you how you can do it with just some estimated returns data. In summary, we want to figure out how much money we would need to put into each fund to help us achieve our goals based on the returns that we will earn. So for this, we do need to estimate the average returns for the fund. This is where a financial planner would be of great benefit as this sort of stuff is their bread and butter. But for now, we're just going to estimate some relatively conservative numbers. Let's assume that the Life Strategy 40 fund will have an average yearly return of 4%, whilst the Life Strategy 100 fund will have an average yearly return of 6%. Using a compound interest calculator, we would be able to calculate how much we need to invest in each fund to reach the designated amounts. Starting with a short-term goal, we can see that starting from zero pounds with an annual rate of return of 4% over 30 years, we would need to make monthly deposits of 300 pounds to reach the 20,000 pound goal. Then for the long-term goal, starting from zero pound again, with an annual rate of return of 6% over 30 years, we would need to make monthly deposits of 250 pounds to reach our 250,000 pound goal. It just shows that the quarter of a million goal that in many ways seems much more intimidating is in a sense easier to achieve as you have to actually deposit less each month. But you know, that's the magic of compound interest. Now, of course, these are just some ballpark figures. So take it with a pinch of salt. Either way, we hope that the process makes sense to you. By setting clear goals, separating them properly, selecting funds to work towards each of the goals, and then figuring out how much money you have to invest in each fund, we can make a fairly comprehensive financial plan in minutes. Again though, we do want to make it clear that this is where a financial advisor would add a ton of value. This is their business. But for somebody who's just started out investing, like me, this is a good place to get started. Hopefully you can see that it can be easy to use the tools that Vanguard provide, specifically with their life strategy range, to work towards our financial goals and become successful investors. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's not all about the numbers or getting the most returns or what the hottest stock is. It's about achieving what we want in life. Big shouts out to this dude who actually recommended that we make this video in the first place. If you have any video ideas that you'd love to see us cover, just let us know in the comments. We're always gonna read them and we always reply. And with that, we wish you all a good day. Thanks for watching.